gotten here. He was wondering if Paul Luther was inspired by William of Baskerville. Um, I don't think so. Uh, we had other inspirations for Paul Luther, but not not William of Baskerville. I don't think so. Um, I I because Ken Ken and I create all the stories, um, and him and I together create things. So the reason I say I don't think so. Um, I would want to check with Ken to be certain. Um, we often pull a lot of inspiration from a lot of sources, and together Ken and I uh, generally, um, you know, go through and, and add things and change things. So uh, I can certainly check with him and get back, but uh, um, not off the top of my head. Okay. Let me kill these here for a second. And then I'll read SFK's questions, because she's got quite a few that she wanted to ask. Because I put up a thing last week. Last week we had our uh, one-year anniversary stream, and I announced that we were going to be doing a stream uh, with you guys this week. And yeah. I put up a, a little form topic on our group for people to ask questions, and she had quite a few, actually. So let's see. She says, "Do you think the inevitable uh, inevitable move move to cloud gaming based uh, computing will be detrimental to game development in the future?" No. Well, um, I think it's a great question. I actually think it will not. It will actually improve all of game development, um, and it will really. What's happening right now is you're seeing the, in my opinion, you're seeing the advance of technology rapidly. Um, still accelerating and but the social impact of what it's having is it's having less and less impact so the the more that's called commoditization the more that um, the more technology that goes into something like a cell phone as an example the more things it does like text and voice and video the less we actually put value on it and so what's what's yeah. what that's gonna mean for game makers is people are gonna stop caring about the hardware and they're really going to just start caring about the games. Like, if you buy a if you buy a movie or you go to the movies, you don't care what VCR you put it on. Um, and um, at the end of the day, I think when things inevitably do go to the clouds, um, we'll be just be looking for the game itself, and you know whatever controller we're using or whatever interface we're using to do that will be less important than the content itself, and that will really elevate um, companies that make games really well. And as an example, uh, a lot of uh, this might surprise people, but I think Nintendo uh, being so strong at making games is really, really going to shine when that stuff starts to happen. Okay. Yeah, Nintendo, in the public's eyes, has been struggling quite a lot re uh, recently, but I think they actually have a pretty good plan set up from what I've been seeing, especially with some of their new stuff they've been showing off. You know, regardless of what short-term bumps that are in the road, in my opinion, if you want to know, if you really want to project how someone's going to go, and we can never tell, predicting the future is very difficult, but I think the largest indicator of success is what quality, what determines how good are the games that they're making. If they're making really good games, if we really are going to these clouds, that's really what the selling feature is going to be. Yeah, and also the consistency and the quality of the games, I guess. Exactly, and who's been more consistent than Nintendo? I can't think of anybody. There's a lot of That's great true. developers up there, but Nintendo, you know, every time I pick up a game, I'm constantly surprised by like how strong they are. True, true. Even Another their, le their quote-unquote less good games are at least well-made, well-designed, polished, and just well done. Yeah, they're, they're generally bug-free for the most part, too. Yep. Yeah, they're very good at that stuff. <laughs> Unless you start whipping out the game genie. <laughs> <laughs> That's not them. <laughs> obviously, obviously. But everyone's had fun with Game Genies in the past. <laughs> I think this guy would benefit from Tyrannus's glass. <laughs> I think so. I don't know if uh, you guys heard about that, but um, um, one of the weapons were given away on um, if you if you buy uh, if you buy the digital pack uh, on our crowdfunding is something called Tyrannus's Gladius. And um, Pius has a Gladius, but it's a different type of Gladius than what Pius had. Um, what it does is it keeps, it, it it's basically gives you the curse of immortality. And I say curse because the sword actually allows you to die. You can lose limbs, you can get your head cut off, um, and you will die. But what will happen is you'll slowly knit together. You remember all the pain of death, you remember all that anxiety, you will 
your uh, all the basically all the people and things that you have killed with that Gladius will be infused in you. So you'll become stronger, but your sanity slowly going to drain away, and you slowly become insane the longer you use the sword and the more people you kill with it, That's, and the more often you die. That sounds fantastic. Wow, exactly yeah, exactly like something I would want. It yeah. sounds like a really creative. Uh, Idea, nice theming, and then I guess it will lead to an interesting T for death. Not oh, so yeah. much a penalty in, in setting the player back as much as just screwing with the player and making things hard on them. I don't really see it as a penalty. I see it as a, a reason to die more often. Yeah, I want to <laughs> see more insanity effects too. Yeah, Obviously, exactly. you're going to do some run through of the game where you just try to see everything that can go wrong. Oh, I used to do that all the time with Eternal Darkness. I think I've right. seen all the, the, the sanity effects in this game. No, the reason I said penalty though was just because in every game where you, where you can die and things, I mean, the death penalty is always always interesting, like how they incorporate that into a game. So I'm very happy to hear that you guys have some creative idea set up for that, so it doesn't just become, oh, you died, you you have a counter that drops by one number. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you also got to remember that the the gladius Tyrannus's gladius is uh, only available through the uh, crowdfunding campaign, so. Yep. If you don't I'll get it in the crowdfunding, it. if you don't uh, get it in the crowdfunding campaign, then uh, you're just gonna have to be jealous of all those people on streams that are streaming with it. <laughs> <laughs> and and what, one of the one of the things that's what, cool about it, um, sorry about that, is oh, that okay. you you can use it. You can, we're gonna set it up so you can use it as any character in the game. Oh, nice. Uh, very that's nice. Legit. And the question I was going to say, and uh, for those that don't know, what level is that uh, unlocked at in the crowdfunding? The $100 um, level. Yep. $100 level. The digital pack where you get the, the soundtrack, uh, the digital art book. You get a whole pile of things, but you get the Gladius as well. It's a limited edition. So, Dennis, which should I go with? Uh, my favorite's always been Zelatoth. Um, That's what but... the girls are saying, too. <laughs> A uh, shout out to Groz. Welcome to the stream. Hey there. Is he one of the development team? No. People are. He's just active on the forums. Ah, okay. I see. Cool. All right. So, um, in, communities. in uh, Path of the Eternals, is there um? You mean wow, Shadow, Shadow of, the of the Eternals. Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> I was reading something else that was here. That's cool. <laughs> in Shadow of the Eternals, uh, there's been a lot of speculation that there could be another. Is there any anything you could say about that? Like another path or anything? I, I'd say that another uh, another path of what do you mean? Um, you know how you have Zelatoth and and you know. Oh. How you have your three here? Is there some that have said that there may be a fourth? Some people believe there is, or think there is. Is there any anything you could tell us about that? I'm I'm getting confused. Are you talking about Eternal Darkness or Shadow of the Eternals? Uh, I'm talking about kind of like a, a, a merger type thing, because in Eternal Darkness, some people believe you know there's there's a fourth that you know don't actually really see, and then some people have said. You know, maybe they'll bring it over into uh, Shadow of the Eternals, like later on. Oh, I see, like a cameo or yeah, something like, like yeah, that. Yeah, that sort of thing. I see. Um, um, well, certainly we'll see how well the crowdfunding does, um, and if if uh, we do really really well and we get to some stretch goals, you know, we can always talk to Nintendo and see what we can do. Uh, as far as um, as far as cameos and stuff like that, um, I think uh, you know time will tell, um, and it's. If you're referring to uh, Eternal Darkness, um, if there was um, another uh, ancient besides Mantarok, I can't talk about that. It's a secret. Okay. Right. <laughs> that's uh -oh. that's what I was trying to say, uh, but I totally messed that up. Sorry about that. I was that. just about. To, I was just thinking that when you asked that, Asuka, um, without trying to pry too much information out of you guys that might be uh, under wraps. Um, mm -hmm. How much would you say that Shadow of the Eternals is going to be a direct sequel in, the st in terms of theming and story? And how much would you say that it is... Well, no, actually I'm wording this very badly. Would you say it's going to be more of a direct sequel or more of an analog storyline? That No, uh, it's, it, it's a spiritual successor, to... yeah. It right. um, is not a sequel. Um, right. And it's, it's a different universe with different characters um, and a totally uh, different... Uh, background on things so right, yeah it's right. not a sequel that's actually a good idea because not a whole lot of people had a chance to True. play with a GameCube so they might have missed out 
on this game, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's it's funny. Uh, Eternal Darkness has a very strong cult following, but it did not sell very well. And one of the reasons we did a Kickstarter uh, was in the video game industry nowadays, um, if you're going to see a lot of this stuff at E3, you're going to see fewer and fewer games made. And these type of games are, they only make them if they're guaranteed to sell right. millions and millions of copies. And so getting a game made uh, anything like Eternal Darkness now is, is probably not ever going to happen. Um, so we thought we we would do that, and uh, so we created Shadow of the Eternals. Um, uh, we're we've got a lot of really new ideas of where we want to take things, and we want to build from our, uh, la our our experiences and and take things in a different way than what people are used to seeing these days. Sounds good, and I really hope everything goes well with it. I'm well, I, I for one, am a perfect example of what JC just said, because I also had a GameCube, but I never picked up Eternal Darkness, because um, eventually I, I kind of yeah, I, I kind of burned out on the GameCube, because friends of mine didn't play it, they didn't have it, etc. So, But it was always a game that I was always very interested in, and a while back we did a stream of the game, and I purposely kind of didn't I still always intend to at some point pick it up and play the game and I still want to know about it but then playing Shadows of the Eternals nothing of the story etc will be spoiled and vice versa I'll still be able to pick up Shadows of the Eternals without having to worry about not getting what's going on that's right it's you you do definitely do not need to play Eternal Darkness uh, right. they're separate universes um, it, it um, You'll get an idea of the kind of game we're, we're making, but storyline and they're they're not related. Right. Okay, I'm going to take another question from uh, one of our members that had posted one up on the topic I asked last week. Uh, what do devs think about people who get you know very pissed off or have like a certain hate towards a particular aspect of a game whether it's story customization gameplay that sort of thing from a dev's point of view what would you say would be their feelings or what would your feelings be at that sort of thing where it's like someone's like you know maybe the story isn't the best or the combat isn't the best what are your thoughts about that um, well, yeah, to say whatever anyone else thinks, I could never do, but I can tell you what my opinions are and what Precursor's opinions are um, generally. Um, the first thing I would say is the customer's always right. Um, so uh, regardless of uh, whether uh, a consumer or a gamer uh, is right about what's actually wrong, um, if they're complaining about something, somewhere, somewhere, there's something wrong that you need to look at and improve. So, one of the interesting things that we're doing with Shadow of the Eternals to help this, I, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but um, we have three pillars making this crowdfunding game. The first one is, you know, crowdsourcing, because it gives us complete uh, creative control, which we need to do the next two following things. We have something, when you pledge on Kickstarter, you have something, you join something that we call the Order. And what we're allowing to happen here is people in the community writing content for the game. It's suggesting gameplay, sanity events, whatever they're going to be, and then we're going to incorporate that. And so before I used to say, uh, back in the, when we were part of the traditional industry, I would say things like, I want to play games, or I want to make games that I want to play. Now, for the first time, gamers can actually help make the game and play and make games that they want to play. So there's this interesting loop where we're saying we want to work with the consumer during the production and or the gamer during the production. And then the last thing we're doing to make sure that this is uh, really effective, um, if you look at uh, Shadow of the Eternals, the production value is very, very high, I think, for a crowdfunded game. And we're using the Crytek engine. It's very expensive to use that engine. Um, and uh, from a standpoint of uh, making sure that we can truly incorporate uh, the, the, the order's input, we've made it episodic so we can release it in small chunks and can continue to iterate. So the whole combination of uh, episodic content, uh, consumer-created uh, input, and actually crowdfunding will allow something different to happen that 
frankly, I am so excited about. So, and because if you look at a, a, a AAA product, they usually take anywhere from three to six years to make. Mm 